Hey folks, Dust here, and like many of you, I just watched EG get the title at ESL 1 New York. It is, of course, EG's return to the Counter-Strike franchise as an organization, and it's the first really big title for the core group that make up this EG team that go back to the Energy Squad that we saw throughout this year and even into last year. I mean, they won a couple of minors, they won a CS Summit, they won that IEM Shanghai event, but those events were up against much lesser competition than the elite level teams that EG was facing at this event and they were able to do it finally get a big title and now we have another big North American powerhouse next to Team Liquid that can actually be an elite level team this is probably going to catapult EG into the top three alongside Team Liquid and Astralis and those three teams in EG Liquid Astralis are probably going to be fighting for titles for the foreseeable future they seem so far ahead of everyone else right now especially considering all the other roster moves that are going on with all the other teams that are, are in the top 10 or certainly close to it when you think of like an Ents you know, just getting sunny. When you think about Vitality just bringing on shocks and so on and so forth, uh, this is really, really cool. Not only to see EG come back to Counter-Strike as an organization, but to see this group of players with Stanislaw now at the helm be able to come and get a really big result. So in the build-up to this event, they haven't played that much together. I mean, the debut with Stanislaw was ESL1 Cologne, where they got a top six finish, ultimately losing out to Liquid and Vitality, kind of the two top ranked teams in the world at the time. Got some wins over Fury and FaZe. So it was okay, but nothing super Super special and then we had the blast pro series la where again nothing really special happened here they got a couple of maps in the group stage they wound up making it to the semis because this is like that new format for blast or at least for this one event <laughs> And then they wound up losing the best of three of the phase, and it just didn't really impress anyone. Uh, they wound up winning the America's Minor. Uh, didn't really beat any big-name teams except for Fury to get it, so kind of just passed that one up. But then you go to Starlighter Berlin. You know, this is after the player break. It's very clear during this two-month period after the America's Minor that this team put in a lot of work. I mean, maybe they did take a break as well, but you can just see how they really kind of moved their map pool around. We'll talk a little, a little bit about that later. Uh, and how they were able to get some really big results here. I mean, they did get Get upset in their opening game in the challenge change against Dream Eaters, but then they wiped through Ty Lu and Simon and Avangar, no problem. They you know, we're able to 3 0 the legend stage, including 2 0 ing Astralis. I mean, the, the overtime game on train was pretty insane, but uh, we got the nuke victory as well. Then they go into the quarterfinals. They 2 0 Navi, which is obviously a little bit of a newer team. You know, Boomich hadn't been on the team for very long. We also know Zeus is on his way out. Uh, so there's a little bit of a caveat there to that, but still, you know, a pretty good team. Then they wound up losing to the eventual champions, Astralis, in the semifinals. Still a top four finish. Still a great starting point for this team. But let's not harp on the past too much. Let's talk about what just happened this weekend. You know, we go into it, EG plays their opening matchup in the group stages against FaZe. Now, obviously, again, there's going to be a big caveat with this FaZe team because they just brought on Brookie or Brokey. I'm not sure how to pronounce his name. Uh, I think everyone's been saying Brookie. And then, of course, they brought on Cold Zero. So this is a brand new FaZe team. Nico's back at the in-game leader position. There's a lot of moving parts there. Couldn't really expect much. It was a decent game on Nuke, but then they blew them out on Vertigo. Uh, didn't give the FaZe a single T round there. 2 well the series. Uh, move on into the Group B winner's match, which is the best of three against Astralis. Uh, now, this is a team that they had beaten in a best of three at Starlight or Berlin Major. This is also a, a team that's the send-off of event for daps also beat astralis in the best of three in the group stages of that event so you can kind of add that little bit of history there i guess you could say and they had a really close series here i mean dust 2 was a 16 14 game inferno was 16 12 uh saw basically evil geniuses get eight rounds on each half of each of these maps so that's kind of a little interesting fun fact i guess you could throw in uh so 2-0 here for evil geniuses look fantastic uh in particular just seeing them be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with and shallow's team that seemed to be revitalized i mean when they beat them at the kind of uh, EPL finals when Dash still on the team a little bit ago, you know, you can kind of tell that Astralis is off their game. Uh, however, when you look at the Berlin Major, yeah, they beat him in, in the group stage best of three, but Astralis beat him where it mattered most, and that was in the playoffs. And so it felt like Astralis had, had turned the corner and were back in business. And so going into the series, you know, you kind of favored Astralis just a little bit, uh, to be perfectly honest. Uh, but EG come out and they win it. Uh, really great stuff. So then they go on to the semifinals and they're playing against G2. Again, G2 looks a bit softened up. They haven't been performing as well lately. They obviously are going through their own roster transition period with Shocks leaving the team, Kiyoshima standing in. Not sure what the long term plans of G2 are going to be. There's talks of Nexon Hunter coming in. There was talks of Lucky being on his way out, but now he's still here for this tournament. Uh, so not really sure what's going on there, but this is a pretty dominant series from EG. It was on Dust 2 and Nuke. They started on T side both maps. Both times they got double digits on their T sides. Uh, didn't seem to struggle too much to close. 
so kind of an easy semifinal for Honest for EG. They move on to the finals to play against Astralis in a best of five. Now, in this best of five, we knew that Astralis was going to ban Mirage. They always have been here lately. That's been kind of their, their move in their ban phase. Uh, they've actually been allowing Train through a little bit. Uh, EG removed Overpass. has kind of been their, their big ban lately with Stan's Law on board and kind of how they move things. We see Astralis picking Inferno to open up the series. Now, this is a really, really good map for Astralis. Obviously, their nuke streak that, you know, was, was up there for like one of the longest streaks in CSGO history was what they're super known for. But their Inferno was also really, really strong. They also had a pretty big streak on that map. It was also up there for like inferno streaks in csgo history and it's a common map i mean almost everyone plays it uh and even with them kind of you know losing form and such uh over this year they always kind of maintain their inferno to be really really strong uh, also historically not a great map for the core of this eg team when you look at their uh, tenure with daps but it is something that they have really been looking good on since Dana's law came on board we saw them uh use it to pretty good effect um when they needed to uh, they didn't actually play it that much at the major just against simon in the group stage um, but they were able to to use it uh, elsewhere and, and seem like a map that they were really working on. Uh, so those are going to be interesting to see how that played out. Uh, EG picking Dust 2, that's been one of their big maps, obviously one of the maps that they uh, used to great effect, uh, especially during the Legend stage over at the Major. It's a map that Astralis certainly can play, though, so you know that was going to be interesting. Astralis actually pick into Train, which, which was definitely a little bit odd uh, to, to kind of pick it that early, uh, especially considering how strong, you know, EG can play that map, and considering Astralis have typically stayed away from that map. They were never really bad at it. Their record was always good, but they just always kind of strayed away from it. Uh, and then, you know, obviously Liquid always banned it against them, so you didn't see them play it in, in the, kind of that key uh, matchup that Astralis was, was most known for throughout this year. And then we see EG go ahead and pick into Nuke, and then Vertigo gets left over, right? And so that's how we start things. And so Inferno, holy shit, dude. EG just destroyed them. Like, this was unreal. Like, I don't think I've ever seen Astralis' t side get dismantled this hard on Inferno. I mean, it, it, it might be the worst T-Side they've ever played on Inferno. I haven't looked back at the numbers, but I feel pretty confident that there's probably been very few times they've only gotten two T-Rounds on Inferno. Maybe there was, like, one instance uh, during the Major or, or something like that or, or prior that I'm just not remembering where they also did really, really bad on Inferno. But it's rare to see them do this. I mean, that that is without question. Uh, so not much to say there, dude. They just got curb stomped. I mean, <laughs> they were never in that game. It winds up being 16-3. Dust 2 is a little bit more interesting uh, when you actually really break this one down. Um, because this is the map where it feels like EG had a, a, a you know, kind of a, a slower start on their T set, I guess you could say. Like, Astralis were definitely up there for a bit. Uh, but then EG really recovered towards the end of the half. Uh, and then they just went on that crazy run to close the game. You know, that nine-round CT run. At one point, they were down 12-7. Uh, then they just make this this crazy run the CT side. Crazy plays all across the board. Uh, some of the hero plays that happen, like Ethan's kind of play on the A-ramp where he gets the kill out long, then 180's the guy that's on the platform. Uh, a few other things you can kind of pull from this game. Uh, that was just kind of crazy to see them go on a mini comeback of sorts and really bring that one back in. That's when you thought they were going to win the series. Like, they had curb stomped Inferno, they had fallen behind on Dust 2, but then wound up recovering and winning it. They're up 2-0, well. we're going on the train. A map that you probably are going to favor EG on, even though Astralis picked it, just kind of considering, you know, who's been playing it recently and things of that nature. And that's really all but the case, right? Like, Train is obviously the closest uh, game in the series when it's all said and done. EG definitely had chances to win this. I mean, they didn't have the best CT side with seven rounds, but they had a really good start. I mean, at one point, they were up 7-2, to two, so it seemed like they were going to really just tear this one up. But then we saw kind of in the last six rounds, Astralis be able to win five of those six. Then they wound up getting uh, a 3-1 start in the second half. They wound up going up 10-9. Um... But then it is just kind of takeover mode from EG. They go on kind of a six round spread and, and seven rounds played where they wind up jumping up to 15 to 11. And so you think this is the end. It's going to be a 3 0. EG's about to make history right here. But no. <laughs> we see Astralis go up uh, four rounds. It seemed like EG was getting a little bit hesitant on their T sides. Couldn't really find the openings anymore. Uh, you know, it seemed like Astralis were just kind of really clamping down on them. They force into overtime. Uh, and over time, it's like Astralis is going to take it, but then we actually saw EG make kind of this this two-round kind of streak where they had two clean sweeps, and they actually forced it into another overtime. Uh, but ultimately, Astralis wins this thing 22-20, to 20, and then we're going to be moving on to Nuke for a uh, map four. 
Now, Nuke started huge for EG, bro. They did whatever the fuck they wanted on T-side to start this game. They were up 8-1. They were smashing the Strauss. I'm thinking this game is going to be over pretty early. But then we had that run from the Strauss. They won six in a row. They actually close out the half 8-7. Uh, and so you're thinking, okay, we got a game on our hands all of a sudden now. Like maybe Astralis, you know, they usually have a pretty good T-side nuke, at least during their heyday that they did. Uh, you know, obviously our nuke is nowhere where it used to be. In fact, they've really been struggling on it recently. It's kind of crazy to see how far they've fallen from when they were on that historical streak to where they are now. But nonetheless, you expect, you know, Astralis had woken up. They had made the comeback on train. They were able to make a little mini comeback in the first half of this map. You're thinking, all right, we got to fight on our hands. No, of course not. EG allowed one round the entirety of the second half. They had six rounds in a row to start the half. They won the final two. Uh, they wound up winning at 16-8, so a pretty dominant series overall. Uh, and yeah, EG have done it. They have gone on to win ESL 1 New York. They get a huge title. Um, again, this is the biggest title that any of these players have ever won, except for maybe Stannis, obviously, having won E-League Season 2 and stuff like that. You could certainly make that argument. But uh, definitely for, and then obviously Tarek won the major. But when you think of the core of the team, uh, you know, the guys that have been here for a really long time, you know, Cirque, Ethan, um, Breezy, sorry, uh, this is the biggest one they've won. They, again, they've won some small stuff, a couple of minors, I Am Shanghai, a CS Summit event, but nothing compared to this, nothing compared to beating Astralis and multiple uh, BO3 and then a BO5 series, a team that just came hot off the major, uh, a team that's been the greatest of all time, uh, short of some of the, you know, I guess issues they've had in 2019 kind of after the IM Katowice major leading up into the Berlin major. Uh, this team has just been number one for so long. And so for EG to get this, uh, it's, it's definitely just crazy stuff. It's obviously crazy for the organization to step in, pick up a team kind of in a, in a hasty situation. I mean, maybe they were talking about it for a bit, but like the actual finalization of the deal happened super fast and, and they may not have even been able to get the deal done in, in a different universe, but they do. The EG gets to represent this team for this event and then they just instantly get a trophy and, and, and that they're going to be able to put in their office space. So that's pretty crazy stuff. And also it's just cool to see that this team now at Stannis Law at the helm kind of bringing that firepower in the in-game leader position and also a very capable shot caller uh, is able to kind of build this team up from, yeah, some really shaky stuff going on at Cologne and, and at Blast LA, but then taking care of business at the minor, doing really well at the Berlin Major, and now getting a big title here at ESL1 New York. And again, it really shows that now we have another big powerhouse uh, to look at going forward into uh, the future alongside Team Liquid. When you think about individual performances at this event, I mean, Breezy's going to get the MVP. I actually didn't watch to see if he got it because I just started recording this video as soon as they won, basically. But I imagine he's going to get it. Uh, if not, Cirque would probably be the next one in line. He's definitely right on Breezy's heels when you look at, uh, you know, the, the ratings and, and KD difference and, and different things of that nature. Uh, Breeze, to me, could be a top five player in the world. He's been phenomenal for this team throughout this entire year. If he's not number five or something by the end of this year, he's definitely going to be like six or seven. Uh, obviously, you think of like Simple, Zywoo, um, Elige. Device is going to be kind of top five players. Obviously, you got to think about guys like Twist and Naf who have been really good all year. Uh, but Breeze is right there, man. Like, he, he's been so good. And Cirque, Cirque has just been on fire lately, especially since Stanislaw joined the team. Uh, he has really, really been up there. Uh, Tarek also had a really good tournament. He was in the MVP race going into the Grand Finals alongside Cirque and Breeze. I think Breeze and Cirque obviously just kind of edge him out once you get to the Grand Finals uh, best of five series. And then, look, like, Ethan and, and Stanis all played fine. Like, they were certainly both, you know, positive, good ratings, good numbers across the board. Ethan had a couple of memorable moments. Again, that clutch uh, on, on Dust2 on the ramp. Uh, obviously, he got them to map point on Nuke with the 1v2 clutch in the lower bomb site. Uh, he definitely played his role, did well, got the numbers he needed to. Uh, shot calling was on point for Stanislaw. He got the numbers he needed to. Everyone played their role. Everyone did a great job. And, and again, that's what makes this team so scary is that, like Liquid, they have five very capable fraggers on this lineup. They are one of the most skilled lineups in the world right now. They are right there with Liquid, in my opinion. Maybe not quite as high as Liquid, just because I feel like Liquid have done it for longer with some of their star players throughout this year and even into, like, kind of, you know, 2018, aside from the Astralis matchup. I mean, they've been doing it for so long. Uh, but but these guys are, are really good. I mean, they have something that Liquid doesn't have, which is an explosive opper who does it consistently. Obviously, Liquid kind of plays musical chairs, and they have guys who can use the out pretty well, obviously Nitro being the main one. Obviously, Naf and Stewie pick it up a fair amount, and, and on their maps, when they do use it, they're obviously effective and can be a big playmaker, especially Stewie 2K on CT sides. I feel like when he picks up an op and does stuff like on Mirage, for instance, he, he can be that guy. But Cirque is the one who, who does it in and out. 
and, and Liquid doesn't have that. I feel like that's kind of an X factor uh, that EG has that Liquid doesn't is that consistent op presence that Zerk brings to the table alongside Breeze, who's super flexible in the roles that he can play with the rifle. He reminds me of Twist in that way, where he does play kind of the edge of the map roles a, a good bit, but there's certain maps and certain executions where he can get in there and be an entry fragger, and he's done entry work as his main role in other teams, and even for this team in the past when they've had different lineups. Uh, so yeah, dude, it's actually crazy to think how skilled this lineup is and how these players are actually getting into really good form. And that's where they get really scary because outside of Liquid, maybe a Strauss, never Dupree, Macius are on form with Device, uh, maybe like Mouse Sports, some of the star players they have on their team. Uh, I mean, there's a couple of ones out there you could probably throw in. I'm just not thinking of right now. But yeah, dude, this team is stacked on skill, stacked on skill. Uh, on top of now actually putting together a, a really, really good map pool. I mean, when you think about uh, the EG map pool, I mean, with this team, they're 8-1 on Dust2. Uh, they've won several games. They had, like, a streak. I think they've won the last five in a row. It, maybe it's actually higher than that now that they've played this tournament. Uh, it might be, like, six or seven in a row or something like that. I'm not even 100% sure, but they definitely have, like, a streak going uh, on this map. Looking really, really good. Also have this streak going on Inferno as well at this point, uh, which is a big turnaround because Inferno used to be kind of a weaker map for them when you look at their land record. But with Stan's Law on board, their Inferno has been super, super sick. Uh, so at this point, their Dust 2 and Inferno are, are top class. Like, they can pretty much go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anyone in the world and, and probably come out on top. Uh, their Mirage is still pretty good. They haven't played it nearly as much as, you know, kind of the older lineup. But what that's did yet, that, that's the key word is yet, because they're still 3-1 and one in the four games that they have played. So definitely look really strong on that. Their Nuke looks balling out of control. Um, you know, they're 7-3 and three right now. They, they have a streak going as well on that map. Um, then you look at Overpass. That's the one that they obviously banned. So, so that's not there. Then their Train, while they did lose it to Astralis in double overtime here in the finals of ESO1 New York, it's been good for them elsewhere. And it feels like a strong... And they have played Vertigo and won it once, which, of course, was uh, against FaZe uh, as kind of the trick pick that they started to do in the opening series of the tournament that they played. So their map pool is fucking stacked, dude. And, in fact, you're also seeing them be able to kind of calculate picks against teams that they, they foresee a weakness in them. Like when they picked Vertigo against FaZe because they knew that it was a new team, probably didn't have very many reps on Vertigo. They decided, fuck it, we'll just go and pick Vertigo. And so the fact that they had that mentality that they can kind of be like ruthless in map pick ban situations, picking into a its weaknesses like that and their map pool is so stacked particularly like their dust to an inferno and their nuke those three are super strong i feel like mirage probably is as well definitely can play train dude like this is a nasty combination when you have a team that has this much skill has this deep of a map pool can flex their picks appropriately depending on their opponent and the fact that they're ramping up they're getting some momentum heading into the end of the year it's sick stuff. And the last thing we'll talk about with EG and kind of my thoughts on, on their future is also the fact that they have uh, a really, really cool style of play. Uh, it's reminiscent of what Liquid can do because they have a lot of players who can flex into different roles uh, in mid-round situations or from map to map. Um, and also it allows them to really vary their style of play because they have effective players on the edges of the map who can also create plays, be entry type players when they need to be. Uh, the fact that Circus capable rifler, lobbying a primary opper, Tarek secondary op abilities. Ethan does it on, at least on the B-bomb side on Dust2 on CT side. Uh, they, they just have that crazy flexibility, uh, and they're particularly good whenever they just gather up and just kind of swarm and trade, which reminds me a lot of what Stanislaw and Tarek used to do together in the Optic days back in 2016 when that team was winning like E-League Season 2 and making the ECS Finals and winning some smaller events like that Northern Arena Montreal event. Um, it, it has that similar vibe to it. When you think of like the the composition of the team, it just it just kind of it kind of feels the same in, in many different ways. But they're capable of playing slow. They have some good utility uses. They have a couple of uh, set pieces they can go into. And I'll just use Dust2 and Inferno as my examples for this really quick to close out the video because these are the maps they've kind of played the most, um, especially this run that they had at New York. So when you think about Dust2, you know that Ethan kind of classically plays the B tunnels and, and, and Breezy's really been playing outside long A. So it's going to be kind of your, your op float. And then obviously you have Stan's long Tarek kind of being that pack that's kind of controlling catwalk and doing a lot of the entry work. Um, the big thing is, though, is that they have a lot of role flexibility thanks to the fact that Breezy has an entry fragger pedigree and he's playing, you know, long A. So he can go out and just make a play out long A by himself, feel confident taking that opening duel and being the entry guy. And if you want to go for long A control early, Breezy can be right there to help lead it alongside Tarek and Stanislaw and stuff like that. And so that can really, really be great stuff. Also, Stanislaw throughout his career is known to fl flex between kind of lurking roles and doing entry work. He's done it so often. Same with Ethan. I've seen him do some entry work at times, be an edge of the 
the map player at times. So they can do this to do spawn-based stuff, and that's why they're so dangerous on Dust 2. They're also just really good at gathering up as five players and just attacking up Catwalk or taking long A control, just trading effectively, using good utility. And they're also good at setting up later rounds with early rounds. Like, for instance, maybe they'll do a bunch of, like, five-man up Cat or long A control plays, but then they'll just send Terra up Cat by himself with some utility, take a shot on A platform, meanwhile they're running four people down your throat in B tunnels, uh, like kind of in the later rounds of the half. So they're really good at kind of that cadence, which is something that Stralis is actually classically known for during their heyday. And so it's kind of cool to see them be able uh, to kind of flex styles, do the pacing changes. You know, they, they consistently kind of put Ethan and Breezy in the solo roles on the edges of the map. So like B tons, uh, on Dust 2 and then, you know, Breezy at long A. Uh, but it's kind of similar for Inferno as Breezy plays the apartments and Ethan's playing over on Banana. Although Banana's a very active peripheral position, so it's a little bit different than some other maps where the solo role is a little bit more kind of just passive and, and not necessarily doing so much. Um, and, and so kind of using that to get into Inferno, again, they can play standard, they can play default, uh, but they have some really good apartments explosions. They're really good at attacking lane effectively. This is where Breezy can get a little bit more involved, even though he's an apartments player. Obviously, Stanislaw and Tarek, you know, being really good at, at kind of entering up. Uh, good utility uses to isolate pit, molly it out, or play into pit by, by smoking off site. Uh, have a lot of different variations they can do on that site. Um, just really, really strong stuff. And then, yeah, the double op that you can get from Cirk and Tarek on CT side on this map, on a map like Train, if you want to run multiple ops, uh, several different ways you can do this. They, they just have it, man. Like, they have that tactical depth that combined with their skill level and combined with their map pool right now, this team can do so much, man. Like, I don't think this is the last title we're going to see from EG, even before the end of this year. Like, again, I think that Liquid and Astralis are right there with them. I think these three are going to be scrapping for a while to establish who's, like, the true number one for a long period. Um, I think it will vary event to event, to be honest, between these three teams. Again, they just feel so far ahead. But, man, EG's arrived, bro. Not just as an organization in Counter-Strike, but now this group of players has a big title under their belts. They've been, you know, placed in top four for so long. They've made a couple of finals here and there. They've won a couple of small titles when you think about the core of this team. But now, with Stanislaw off the helm, they just won a big one at ESL 1 New York against the Strauss, who are hot off the major. Uh, this team has the pedigree, bro. They have the skill. They have the map pool. They have... The, the tactical depth, they have the pick band trickery, they have the coaching, and I'm a pet who helps come up with new stuff, scout opponents, be able to counter strat people. Uh, man, like I could really see this team doing a hell of a lot uh, over the next part of this year. They're obviously going to be at Malmo here very soon. That'll be like EPL and stuff coming up, uh, as well as ECS finals and, and all that stuff that they're going to be able to have this year. And then going into early next year, they just seem so dangerous, man. So it's just been great to watch this. Uh, certainly wishing the best going forward. Definitely a lot of fun uh, watching their performance here in New York. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe for more content. Catch you next time.